a lot of younger fans uh, only know you from your MTV True Life episode. Uh, you want to talk a bit about that and how that came about? Well, what happened was MTV was doing a documentary on wrestling, not Tony Atlas, wrestling. So what they, the narrative was, they wanted to do a wrestling school. They found a wrestling school where the guy trained to be a wrestler. Then they want to do a story on the independent wrestling group. And fortunately for me, the, the, the promotion I had at that time uh, was chosen from. They chose it because they knew who I were. Now, I asked the guy, I said, can I be on there? He said, no, this is not for you, Tony. We want to film the the guys going through the ropes. See, first in the wrestling school, then they wanted to show guys on the independent circuit and getting the, on, as you say, on the job experience. Then they wanted the end of it supposed to be when it, you reach the big time, which is the WWE. So what ended up happening, we did the first show where the guy, what I call my money man, he was the guy that was backing everything. He was the guy that wrote the checks. So it, when MTV here, the, when they hear that all the wrestlers in Maine and Massachusetts and Canada hear that MTV was be at this show, every wrestler this side of the Mississippi called me, said, "Tony, can I be on the show?" I said, "I'm sorry, guy, the show is booked." Another guy, called, sorry, guy, the show is booked. When I got there, now I'm supposed to be the booker. Nobody's supposed to be on that show without you. Know, I'm the one. That's my. Something, not the promoters. His job was to promote the show and sell tickets. That's his job, not to book talent. My job was to, to book a job and to book talent. Uh, Jim Barnett never in, uh, interfered with Ole Anderson booking talent. You know, the Vince never interfered with Pat Patterson booking talent. And he, like that now, Vince don't get involved who Triple H built, book or what Steph to do. That's their department. Make a long story short, I would say there was about maybe 200 wrestlers in that dressing room. At least 200. Now, the way I had the show booked is three shows. My big show was the last show. I called for King Kong Bundy. Well, any independent know if you got a, doing a high school, King Kong Bundy ain't the guy to be there because he's going to eat up all the money. So I had Tom Brandon to be my main event for uh, uh, the, 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 the small event. Then I had another guy to call Dave Vish is going to be my main event for the next event. And then the third and final event, I wanted King Kong Bundy to, to end it with a, you know, a, big, yeah. a big superstar name. So James told Bundy he's on all three shows. I can't pay him for all three shows. There's it, only so much in the, in the budget there, you know. I can't pay Tom Brandon for all three shows. I can't pay Dave Vicious. Then I had a Canadian Hercules, too. He was a guy, a Penn State big guy. I had Canadian wrestler. But each guy's supposed to have, I, I want a group of guys on this show, a different group on this show, and a different group. There were maybe about maybe f six wrestlers I was going to use on all three shows. Right. But these were like the top of the independent world at that time. And these guys were like, you know, freaking fantastic uh, wrestlers at, at, at this time. A lot of them, like Taz, he, you know, and all these guys, they all, you know, Tommy Dreamer, they all went with ECW later. You know, a lot of guys that was on that show, you know, like Tom Brandon, the Patriot, he ended up going with Vince later. So the, yeah, the guy, Salvatore I mean, the talent, sincere. right, exactly. So the, the talent that I have that I'm going to use, but I didn't want every guy for every show. And I want every show to have a different main event. That way, everybody could get exposure. See? Now, I could pay Bundy for one show. Because Bundy, not to, I'm not going to mention his price, but Bundy is, is, is high maintenance. You yes, know, I'm plane nervous. ticket. Yeah, we. You, you know, anybody. You know, um, I got a plane ticket to worry about. I, I got, I got his pay to worry about. I got his, his hotel to worry about. And so it was. You know, that's a, that was a big chunk out of the budget just having for that one show was making the budget tight. Now for three shows, I had to make three times. So after the first show, I said, James, our budget is about gone. We got two shows to go. I said we can't. He said, well, don't pay them. And I said, you don't ask guys to come all the way up here and don't pay them. He said, oh, they understand. So a couple of the wrestlers, believe it or not, came to me and said, Tony, we just want to be on MTV. You don't have to pay us. And I said, I can't have four-hour shows. People don't want to sit through a four-hour show. 
You know, I said, I'm trying to spread all you guys. I want everybody to get a little piece of this this stuff. After the first show, James called me up and said, I'm canceling the shows. If I can't run things my way, this is my business. I'm putting up the money, and you and then you trying to take my business away from me. I said, James, you hired me to do the booking. This is you hired me to do this. So he canceled on us. So the MTV had nothing to do. They came up here. They got two days of taping to do. They only taped one day, and then they got two more days of taping. So they don't drove all the way up from New York to Maine, which is about in a, in a for me, it's about six and a half half hour drive in a the car. They had a van with all their equipment stuff. So about an eight hour drive for these guys, you know, to come up here. Now they got nothing to do. So one guy they got to talking to me, and uh, I started telling him stuff about me. He said, you know. Maybe we said, so let me call. So he made a phone call and they said, well, we don't have, instead of coming over, why don't we just do a thing on Tony Atlas? And that's how it happened. <laughs> I wasn't even supposed to be nowhere on the tape. I asked him, could I be on the tape? God told me no. He said, this is for, because that's definitely theory. The training, on the job training, and the job. That's how they wanted to go. But instead, it was the, the training, nothing in the mother. So what they did, they, they said, they did. My set segment was after the glory. So instead of doing what you do before you get to Vince, they they show what you did after Vince. That's why I was towards the end instead of in the middle. Mm -hmm. Notice Vince was in the middle all the time? Yeah. Because it was the rest of school, Vince, and then Tony. See, Tony, what they did, they, they changed the whole scenario and said, well, this is what you do, this is what happened to you after it's all over with. And the movie was made from, from that too called The Wrestler. You know, oh, and that was based on the right. same that same scenario. You know, the guy lived this high life, and then he loses everything, and all of a sudden hit rock bottom, and they run around doing these little small gimmicks and gimmick shows and stuff. And so that's where they uh, took uh, uh, did with that.